first of all, I want to thank the director, uh, and uh, he has background as a firefighter, and I've always had appreciation for their work. And, and, uh, and being from Miami, you know what emergency preparedness, how important it is to a community. So I'm pleased that you're in the position you're in, and, and I've heard many good things about you. Having said that, not wanting to appear frozen in place, I want to go back to ICE. Uh, explain why it took two months to respond to my letter. Uh, sir, I cannot do that. That's, un that's unacceptable. You should not have waited that long for a response. And I personally will apologize for that. And we're putting a system in place to make sure that does not happen again. Uh, we're putting a, putting a tracking system in place. We've hired an executive secretary. Uh, when I took over FEMA, we were 800 correspondences behind. And we're pretty much caught up with those. But that is no excuse for that whatsoever. It should not have been that long. It should have been a matter of weeks, Thank not you, months. Sir. Thank you. In, in your letter to me, you expressed that uh, you, you tried to find some folks to use this ice, and you couldn't find any. Uh, and then later, once you decided to make it available to the public, that some people came forward. The initial efforts to find recipients where there were none found were through General Services Administration, which is the federal government, the seafood industry, the United States Forest Service, and nonprofits. Uh, did you look to local and state agencies and governments and ask them if they had any, any need or if they could help in giving notice to 501c3s or other charitable groups in their communities? Uh, no, sir. A lot of the ice, we could not get certified as potable. I know you said you drank it and tasted it. And you're fine, obviously. Uh, what we couldn't take that up. We couldn't take that chance. Uh, the, the whole system of what FEMA was, has been using for years with the ice, as we go into our new type of uh, logistics, uh, we are not going to store ice anymore. Uh, we are using third-party logistics. We're using just-in-time delivery systems. So we were, I know, I, I'm making a long answer. I don't mean to do that. Uh, but the answer is we, we tried to find somebody to take the ice. We gave away, away 600,000 pounds of it just recently to a concrete company in Memphis who needed to cool the concrete down and use for things like that. And I appreciate that, and I understand that. But let me ask you this. Why, I would just think, and maybe I'm wrong, when you gave out your notice and didn't get any responses, you only gave it to certain federal agencies in the seafood industry. If you'd have given it to local and state governments and said, hey, put out a bulletin, maybe some people to come forth, and when you finally did make it available, this, this group did come forward, and the 600,000 pounds of ice was used for non-potable purposes, uh, if, if there would have been a better distribution system of, for other commodities. We're not going to have ice in the future, but there are other commodities to put out notice so it could be used before its shelf life expires. It could have been done, and uh, it just seems like that wasn't well thought out. Let me, how do you come up, you just accept the, 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 the bag industry's one-year uh, shelf life, or has, has there any, been any scientific study on this, or Eskimos that have passed away or something? No, sir, not that I'm aware of. Uh, I don't think there's been a study on the Eskimos eating ice. Uh, that, that, is, that has been the standard of a year for that. I know any, all the stuff that we put out, when I store ice at my house, which I do for hurricane season, I always throw it out, generally after six months. I don't keep it much longer than that. But the year was a, is, a, is an industry standard. Uh, I don't know if there's any scientific basis behind that. Being that you accepted the fact that it was non-potable, which I still kind of find difficulty with, and I'll be honest with you, when I was in New Orleans, there was a fellow down there, and I, well, I shouldn't really give his testimony away, but he said that he'd never heard of any such thing as an ice, you know, expiration date. But if it was an expiration date that you honored, why was it disposed of in Memphis where people could go at first and pick it up, not be fenced in and take it home and, and drink it? And per perhaps we could have done that. We, we stored it for hurricane season. Uh, we did not have any hurricanes that year. I, I can't help that part of it. Uh, if we had, we had a hurricane season like was predicted. We probably would have used almost all of that ice, uh, just like we did the year before. But we did have the core uh, come in and test that ice, and they, the core would not certify it as potable, uh, us usable ice. Uh, so that was part of the decision making also. It wasn't just the industry one year. I think the ice is behind us, other commodities maybe in the future, and if you would try to give more notice to folks so they could use it, it might work. Let me ask you about the formaldehyde down there in those trailers. Um, uh, uh, could we ask that you line up this line of questioning shortly so we can get back with the other witnesses waiting? 
Oh, we're under the five minute rule. I didn't see the clock ticking, but well, if actually, it is. we took more than five minutes because we're trying to devote as much of the hearing as Thank possible you, to Chairman. the plan. But we are pleased to have the gentleman ask his questions on formaldehyde. Just was the formaldehyde in the trailers? Uh, is it true that y'all, for fear of some type of action against you, didn't want to give notice to the public about the danger? No, sir. That that email that came out. Uh, from our general counsel, uh, there was literally an eight-hour delay before we took action and started notifying people. It was not; it was nothing purposeful to keep uh, keep people from being told that there was some Aldenheim trailers. We had already put flyers out. We continue to do that, and what we we're doing right now is actually moving people out of those trailers as quickly as possible. Uh, we have CDC is moving in to do some testing to really give us a no kidding scientific basis. What do we really have? FEMA's used these trailers for 20 years. It's the same ones that you buy off the lot. We bought thousands right off the lot. Uh, so if it's a problem with the trailers, and it's truly a, a, an industry problem. Uh, but so we stopped sales of the trailers. We're uh, making a very concerted, uh, high-intensity effort to move people out, particularly in the group sites, uh, to get them in hotels, motels, and apartments. Uh, we are going to make sure uh, that uh, we do everything we can do to, to, to move people out of harm's way. Uh, they, you know, and uh, secondly, we're not going to use travel trailers anymore. If we're going to use any type of mobile, uh, any type of uh, manufactured unit, it'll be strictly will be mobile homes. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chairman. 